If you've been with me for a while, then you're probably aware of my war against the cult of positivity. It's not that I think positivity is in and of itself something negative. It's just the way the cult of positivity has developed, and I'm not the only one who thinks this, it's become, to use current year terminology, pretty toxic. Now, I'm the first one to say that I'm quite pessimistic. Alternatively, you might describe me as negative. And over the years, I've run into people countless times when we get to know, and they remark on me being very negative, always assuming the worst. Most recently, I heard from an internet acquaintance that I hadn't heard from in months. And after the initial exchange, I simply stated that I was surprised that I heard from this individual. And this person has to be a Zoomer and female launched into this diatribe about how I'm so negative and I always assume the worst and I shouldn't assume the worst and so on and so forth. But when people are pessimistic or negative, it is directly related and correlated with the various positive slash negative loops of experience that I've had in life. I Matthew effect, that's a big one. And usually in my life, and the life of those that I'm friends with, that I care about, I see mostly bad stuff going on. There are a few exceptions, but it's basically 75% bad and 25% good. That's not a perfect breakdown, by the way. But I think about the people in my life, things that happen in my life, most of it is not positive. Now, of course, this is all relative. I still have a roof over my head. I have enough to eat for the time being. But the problem with that type of mindset is these so-called positivity cultists would never be content in the sense that they propose that you should be if you just said, why are you so negative? You still have a roof over your head and you have enough to eat. We're talking about bottom most rung of the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, basically. And when you've had in your life cumulative experiences, not over days, weeks, not even over years, but decades, that overwhelmingly have been negative slash have led to a certain sense of pessimism or a black pill view of the world. As I like to joke, I was black pill before it was even a thing. I mean, in terms of worldview, then it makes perfect sense why some people are going to have certain views of the world and some people do not. But my opposition to the cult of positivity is twofold. One, it's obvious why they do it. It's a certain status quo they want to pretend that everything is fine and dandy and nobody has any problems and nobody is struggling. And then they don't want to hear about it. This, by the way, is very much ingrained in American culture. Contemporary American culture is all about not actually telling people how poorly you're doing to the point where some people quite literally off themselves in the process as a result. But recently I had yet another encounter which kind of inspired this video in that I was interacting with the wife of a friend who doesn't like me because I'm quote unquote negative and we were talking about jobs basically that some people are just stuck at dead end jobs and she was going on with her positivity and well if they're stuck for so long then it's their own fault and duh, 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 they need to change the the I'm saying well some people don't have those options. There are too many people out there. Yes, yeah, some of them are there because they have analysis paralysis. Some of them are there because they're not moving on. Some of them, whatever. But a lot of them are there because they don't have a lot of other options. And their job is what allows them to pay their bills for the roof over their head and their food. And she just wouldn't get that. Now, mind you, this is a person who has not faced a lot of hardship or struggle in her life. Uh, shocking, right? And just sees negativity as this horrible thing. But again... Negativity, in the sense that I embrace it, does oftentimes assume the worst, but also braces you for the worst so that things just don't surprise you. I was talking to an acquaintance of mine, for example, who was only 20, and he was telling me the story about how this girl kind of strung him along for over a year and made big claims and blah, blah, blah. And I told him, well, that's perfectly normal. Now, not normal in the sense that that's psychologically healthy, but it's normal, i.e. normative, in the current meta of our society. And he was kind of blown away by that, but that doesn't surprise me. When I see relationships in the current meta year that are functional, that work well, with very little fighting and a lot of cooperation, that's what surprises me. Now, obviously, this is in part due to my environment, what I observe, the people I hang out with, et cetera, et cetera. But the fact is, it's not just that. 
I have a friend, the husband of the wife who doesn't like me, who has agreed with me. He's just way too focused on his own career and subjects to even pay attention to these things. But I said, well, look around. You as a married couple are functional, but you're the grand exception. And then he paused and sat back and said, hmm. He thought about the sister of his wife. He thought about these other people. And Yeah, you're right. It's all shattered. It's all broken. I guess we are the only people that are in a functional relationship slash marriage. That is the norm. Whether it's good or not is immaterial, although obviously it's probably not good. That's the first element. People just don't want to hear about it. They want to pretend, keep the illusion up, make sure that everyone is just chugging along, doing what they're supposed to do. The other issue here is the classic issue of self-extrapolation. It is very difficult if you've had many, many instances of a positive Matthew effect loop in your life that has yielded you know, 75% good, 25% bad, whatever it might be, the breakdown, why they might not have an amazing attitude towards X, Y, Z. The other way around works a lot better. It's easier, for example, to understand as a poor person or somebody who's struggling in general in life what it's like, potentially at least, to have enough money to pay for all the things you want, to not even think about, say, dropping 50 or or $100 on a meal, an expensive restaurant, let alone paying for grocery bills. The reverse is not true, especially if you've never even been there. And if you've been blinded by your own positive Matthew effect loop, and you could also argue that people with a negative Matthew effect loop have been blinded too, it's just that you can see both visions, I'd argue, then it's almost impossible to relate because the positive it has outweighed the negative. People don't just wake up one day and decide to be negative. Now, the funny thing, by the way, about my friend's wife who doesn't like me is that he and I both have insomnia, although mine is far worse than his, I'd argue, and I'm a lot older, so other reasons. But his wife, when she misses her hour of whatever it is she gets, eight to nine hours, she becomes a crabby, whiny, intolerable witch, apparently. It's kind of funny that she, with her low tolerance threshold for sleep deprivation, would blame me for being negative when literally everything in my life requires extra effort because I'm always tired, exhausted. I have to literally choose, do I walk for an hour and a half or do I knock out this work, that sort of thing. It's just ridiculous, but that's a perfect example of inability to extrapolate outside of your own situation to understand why someone might be thinking a certain thing. And in some sense, these are actually two different realities. And these people are two different species. Because, yeah, if you've had overwhelmingly positive experiences and positive outcomes in life, then life is that way for you. I'm not denying it. It is a good life. You have these things to look forward to. Things are working out. You have things that are pretty good overall. But if you don't, Let's say you're really short, really unattractive, not particularly smart. Let's say you got one of the worst decks out there possible. Now, of course, most of the time people have a mixed deck, but it is not just possible, but it exists. Then that's your reality too. We are actually occupants of different realities. But the cult of positivity posits that the singular reality that a lot of people have had very good positive Matthew effect loops in their life, that that is the predominant reality for everyone. And that if you don't conform to it, you're somehow at fault and you need to shut up and keep on shuffling along and do what you're told. That's the difference. I can acknowledge, for example, that there are individuals out there with extremely positive, great lives. And for them, that's their reality. I'm not saying they have no problems, but the problems are either small, minuscule, or they're not major hindrances in their life, right? They cannot acknowledge the reverse. They lack whatever you want to call it, empathy, the ability to extrapolate from themselves, whatever you want to call it, however you want to term it, they cannot acknowledge that, yes, people occupy different niches of reality. They want to spread the cult of positivity, and they want to keep everyone who doesn't occupy that niche of reality, that dimension, in the dark, perpetually silent, and never talking about it. But guess what? It doesn't work. It doesn't work because the black pill, which encompasses all reality, it's not just a dating thing, it's about the harsh reality of life, is something that affects people on a day-to-day basis. And 
Shockingly, as we are social apes, even if we're quote-unquote negative, you still want to have an exchange with people that you can relate to. Certainly in my experience, when I used to work in offices or what have you, you think I liked hearing all the positive BS day in, day out, and pretending as best as I could to go along with it? People say, well, if you fake it, you can somehow force it, blah, 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 and then eventually you'll feel that way. Nope, it doesn't work that way. You're just faking it, you're acting it. And they get angry and upset that people talk about these things in the dark recesses of the internet. Why? Because it's impermissible in polite society. And people don't want to hear any of that. They just want good, 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 good. There are some edge cases, obviously. For example, if your father has died of cancer, presumably they're not going to say, just be positive, bruh. They'll talk about prayers to their deity and blah, blah, blah. That's what they'll do probably. And then eventually you need to get over it and shut up and keep on doing what you're told. But that's just how it works. Part of it is because they're afraid to get dragged down into the abyss. And I get that. It's terrifying. The black pill, the reality that many people face in life can be terrifying. Or to quote Pete the Great, it is what it is. But for them, it's terrifying. Imagine losing your status like that. Imagine your pause of Matthew effect loop transforming to the Stygian depths of Tartarus, right? They don't want that, and I get it. But as much as they don't want that, they're not going to prevent me and other people from talking about it and communicating it. Yeah, guess what? They're actually people stuck at their jobs because they don't have other options. And they're people who psychologically, due to their genetics and as a result of an environment, are not going to be happy-go-lucky. Shocking. Absolutely shocking but it exists. And of course, those people will be avoided by the cult of positivity. I get that. Because you know what's nice about the internet? You don't always need to pretend. That's real life. You just pretend. Everything's just great. Your whole family died in a hurricane. Eh, it's great. Amazing. Everything's just amazing, right? At least online, people can be honest. Of course, what they'll also say is, bro, you need therapy, bro, blah, blah, blah. Because no matter how accurate your views of the world might be, as a reflection of the reality-based niche that you occupy, they still need for you to correct it so they can have their happy-go-lucky lives. And frankly speaking, it's disgusting. But you know what, gentlemen? I'll tell you one thing. In the coming years and decades, it's going to get harder and harder as more and more people are immiserated by the unfortunate reality we inhabit to pretend. Yeah, there'll be people who will have that happy-go-lucky life and they won't need to pretend but the amount of people, we're talking about critical mass here, who won't have that, that will struggle, will grow and grow. And the positivity cultists are going to have to deal with it. They won't have any choice. And I guess they'll just retreat to their niches and villas or whatever it is that they like to retreat to. But it's going to become unignorable at some point in time that the underlying reality for a lot of people is not sugar and spice and all things nice. Shocking, isn't it? Anyway, as always, thank you for tuning in. Please leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe if you've not done so. And if I'm still alive, I'll check you out later. May the gods watch over you. Take care. Bye-bye. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.